All right, so yeah, let's start the class. Today is the first lesson uh, on geometry. Okay, and uh, this this the title of this uh, this lesson is uh, it's called in the geometry. So what we're gonna do study here is we can so called coordinate geometry is we're gonna use the algebra to uh, to study geometry problem. Okay, to study geometry problem. So uh, first of all, okay, and then we have the correspondence between a point in the x y plane and the coordinates of the point. Okay, so first of all, you, you draw a, a coordinate line in the x y plane. In the x y plane, so x axis, y axis. Okay, then. You pick up arbitrary point, you know, x is, is a coordinate line and the y is they're perpendicular to each other. They're perpendicular to each other. Okay. So you first of all you pick up a point in the xy plane, then you draw a horizontal line vertical line, and then you get an intersection point on the axis and another intersection point on the y-axis. So you you get two numbers, and those two numbers are going to be called the coordinates. Of the point P. Okay, so every point in the plane right now, after you put the coordinate system, you can tell the location of the point using two numbers. Okay, so that's a one to one correspondence between the point P and a set of numbers, a pair of numbers. And this is very similar to the number line, we also call the coordinate line. So a number line, just a strict line, and with a center. And it was a unit, okay. And then, uh, then every point on this line, you can assign number. You know, there's a unique number corresponding to that point. So the point P and the one to one corresponds to a number A. Okay, so so that's it's also called the number line, and actually it's called more generally called the coordinate line. So we use a we use a strict line with a center with a one unit. And uh, and uh, and the direction, then then we can uh, use a number to describe the point on the line. Okay, and the one dimension up is two dimension case. We need two numbers to describe the location of the point. Okay, now the question is, uh, how do we use that? Okay, suppose you're given two points in the in the x in the plane was a was a was a coordinate system. What's coordinate system? And the, suppose we know the coordinates. Okay, P1 has coordinate x1, y1, P2 has, you know, the coordinates of P2 is x2, y2. So you just draw the picture and how do you find the distance between P1 and P2? Then you apply the Pythagorean theory. You draw the right triangle, okay, and use a vertical line, horizontal line. Then one side, horizontal side is delta x, the vertical side is the, the length is delta y. Then According to the Pythagorean theory, the distance between P1 and P2 is going to be square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. Now, how do you find the delta x? Right, delta x is the horizontal uh, uh, length of the triangle. So you look at that, how to get the delta x. You get, you get two points on the x-axis, right? The first point that was coordinate x1, the second point you know, coordinate x2. So Delta x is just the difference of those two, two, two numbers. Okay. And then similarly, delta y is the difference of those two numbers. Anyway, so you get, plug them into the formula, you get a distant formula. So once you, okay, now all you need to know to calculate distance is all you need to know the distance. There's the coordinates of this point. If you're given the coordinates of two points, you can find the distance between. Uh, between two points, just plug them into the formula. You really don't need to draw the picture, measure it. Okay, so let's see. Here's the example. You are given two points with coordinates. Uh, uh, first point negative one two, and the second uh, second point is was coordinates four and fourteen. Okay, how to find the distance? You don't even to, need to plot them into the xy plane. There is no need. All you need is this. Pair of numbers, those two pairs of numbers. Okay, according to 
Taba formula. The distance is just the square root of the square of the difference of their x coordinates, the square of the difference of their y coordinates. Okay, x coordinates are negative one and four, so just the difference. And then you get the square five square plus twelve square. Right, five square plus twelve square. Now. Uh, after you simplify the 5 square 25, 12 squared is 144. Then you get square root of uh, 169, and that is a 13 square. So then you get 13. The difference here, uh, uh, so the distance is 13. Okay, this just happened to be integer, but not always true in general. You know, it's not going to be integer. All right, so now let's try to figure out the formula for the middle point between two points, okay? First of all, on coordinate line, you have two points, P and the Q, okay, you can say P1, P2, okay? Let's say use a P1, yeah, P2, okay, P1 and P2. I'm trying to find the coordinate of the middle point, M. Now, so-called middle point means the distance from between P1 and M should be equal to the distance between M, uh, M and P2. So let's find the formula. So that's why the distance between P1 and M is X minus X1. And then the distance between M and P2 will be X2 minus X. Uh, that's X bar, okay? Yeah. So X bar is the coordinate of the middle point, okay? Then you will see you move this to the left hand side, move this to the right hand side, you get x bar twice and x2 plus x1. And this is just the average value of this. Okay, maybe you like so. So the average value of the, the coordinate is going to be the, the coordinate of the middle point. Okay, that's how do we find out. Okay, that's one dimension, but we'll focus on two dimensions today. All right, so now. Now you have two uh, points, P1, coordinates X1, Y1, P2. So the middle point is here, right? And I'm going to call it M, X bar, Y bar. So how do you find the formula for this? I think if you can see that this middle point M also give you this middle point, and then you agree, right? So this will be uh, here's x1, here's x2, this will be x bar. So I think that should be just half of x1, x plus 2. So immediately we will get the formula. Yeah, do not just memorize this formula. You know how do we get the formula? We should know how. Don't just memorize those formulas, okay? And uh, and uh, that's two dimensional case. Okay, so now you have find the middle point, okay? Uh, that's it, so this is the middle point formula. Uh, let's take a look at some examples, okay? So we are given, Point the P has called negative one and the two Q uh, 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 three and the four and R, we don't know X and the Y. Okay. So if Q is the middle point of P and R. Okay. So what are the coordinates of R? Okay, now to solve a geometry problem, we should always uh, try to draw the picture first. That helps. Okay, so, uh, well, plot point P, negative one and two. And we're here, three and the four. And we're here. And the R, we don't know, I is somewhere here. So this is the R.
All right, so Q is going to be the middle point between P and R. So according to the above formula, right, the so three should be equal to the sum of the, uh, the average value of the x coordinate. And the four should be equal to the average value of the y coordinate. Okay, then from here you can solve the problem. You can find the x, uh, uh, six plus one, so x should be equal to seven. And here, I think y should be equal to three. Uh, no, six, okay, six. Multiply to both sides by four and then minus, uh, minus two. Okay, so you get six and the seven. Those are the coordinates. Okay, those are the coordinates. Okay, so those are the typical problems. Now we're going to do uh, some uh, problems uh, which will be quite a little bit tricky. Uh, it's a little, yeah, you know, it's a little tricky problem. We need to know uh, how to find it quickly. Okay. Okay, I have a, a, a three points. Okay, those are three points. And uh, the point A has from origin. Point B, four and two, and point C, two and four. Okay, this is a triangle, right? So this is A, B, C, triangle. First question. What is the area of the triangle? Second, uh, find the edge length, side length, okay, side length, okay. okay. Let's do this problem. I think it's, yeah, how do you find the area? Area by definition, right? Area, no, by definition. We have a very simple formula. It's called the, the base time times zero by two. Okay, the so base times height divided by t, but it's harder to find the base. It's harder to find the height. Okay. All right? Maybe I just trying to find the flatness first. So the distance between A and the C. Uh, the difference of x coordinates, the difference of that coordinates. So that's getting four and uh, 16, that's a square of 20, square of 20, four times five, that's two square of five, okay? Have to simplify. So I also get A and the B. A and the B, that would be four minus zero square plus one zero square. It's a, it's the same, two square, yeah, square of 20. So this is gonna be, I, I saw this triangle, then, D e and the C, the difference of the X coordinate, four minus two square, two minus four square, okay? The, the difference, yeah, the X coordinates and square and the difference of Y coordinates square. So you get two square plus two square is two square two. Okay, they are all the side lengths, the irrational numbers, okay? Now, you can always find the area of a triangle of a nice source triangle. Okay, right? Any idea? Now we're going to learn this, okay? Suppose we're given an isosceles triangle, how to find the area of the, of a, of a, of the area, okay? The idea is that we just need to, you know, we are going to learn Pythagorean theory, okay? So this is a Pythagorean theory and you find the age, then you find the area. So let's do it, okay? 
eventually we're going to study Pythagorean theory by, 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 the, uh, by the formula of Pythagorean theory. H squared plus, you have twice of square, two of square. Yeah? It's going to be two square, five square, right? This is a Pythagorean theory. You can just look at the top, half of the triangle. Okay, H squared equals two, you know, plus two equals, here's 20 again, right? So H squared equals 18, and 18 is two times nine, right? So it's two times nine, so 18, so two times nine, and the square of nine is three, so three times four. All right, so once you get an H, then you get a height. So then, oh no, then you have a height, then, then you find the area. The area is going to be half of the base times the height. Okay, and the answer is going to be three times two, six. So that's the area. It's not the best way to solve this problem, but at least the way I go around, if you find all the three sides and you see, this is a uh, this is the isosceles triangle, and uh, if you know already know Pythagorean theory, and if you apply that to find height, then you solve the problem. But I'm going to do the opposite. We suppose we don't know Pythagorean theory. Well, this is the formula, yes. But we we how do we solve the problem? Just use the area formula. Okay. So here's the idea. Let's go back. We can draw this triangle, okay? A, A, C, and the B. Okay, what I'm going to do is I draw a horizontal line. I cut this triangle by uh, actually here's a square. So this is a four, this is a four, and here's a four and a four, and the four and the two, and that is the two and the four, okay? So how do you find the area of this isosceles triangle? All you have to do is find the area of the square and subtract the area of the three areas of the three triangles, right triangles, okay? So the area of the triangle is going to be the area of the square times four, right? minus the area of the right triangle at the bottom and uh, that is going to be two to four right and then the area of the upper right upper right okay that was will be area two times two because the edge length is two two okay because yeah then subtract the area of the other triangle and that will be two and uh and four, okay? So this area is going to be four times two divided by two. Okay, so now you get 15, four, two, four. Okay, so that's is six. So you get the same number, but it's much easier, quick way. Okay, it's much easier, quick way to solve the problem. Okay. So for in the mass, uh, for you know for geometry problems, sometimes there is a multiple way to solve it. Okay, if you find the three or four different ways to solve it, it's great. You don't, yeah. When you finish a problem, you find the one way to solve them. Ask yourself, am I able to solve the problem using a completely different approach? Okay. And uh, there is another formula. Uh, later on, we're going to study for the area of triangle. Is uh is called a Heron's formula. If you know the three sides, and you can find the area using the three sides. Okay, but I'm not gonna talk about this. You know, we already find the three sides, you know, right? So you can use a Heron's formula to find the, the area. But the simple simplest form method here is is cover the triangle, use a rectangle. And then find the area of the rectangle minus the area of the triangles, light triangles surrounding this triangle.
All right, so use a similar idea. I want it to work out by itself. Okay. Find the, the area of the triangle, uh, a triangle ABC, which has vertex A, negative two and the Y, B, one and the three, and C, four and the zero. Okay, please do this problem. I give you a couple of minutes. Yeah, one minute, should be able to solve it. Now, if you get answers, uh, just let me know, okay? All right, so uh, here's a triangle, right? First of all, uh, you plot the three points into the X, Y plane. Right, into the X, Y plane. So the first point, negative two in the one, that's A. The second point, uh, one and the three. The third point, four and the zero. Okay, so the triangle looks like that. Okay, how do you find the area? You cannot find the length of one side or find the height. No way. Too complicated. You don't need to do that. So what you're going to do is, uh, you draw a rectangle, cover it, okay? Then you have a three uh, triangles around that. That's the first one, right? This is a right triangle, so you can easily find the area. Okay, you can easily find the area for each of them. Then you use the subtraction, then you find the yeah, so here, uh, let's mark it, okay? This is gonna be negative two, and here's the height, negative two and the three, and this is the one and the three, right? And here's the four and the three, and that's a four and the zero, okay? And that is gonna be negative two and the one. So it's easy to find out the area of the triangle, A, B, C, is, is there going to be the area of the rectangle? Uh, rectangle, the length is six, Height is three, okay? And the minus is the area of the yellow triangle, half of, I think, a six times one. The area of uh, the green uh, triangle. And uh, from one to four is three. And uh, from zero to three is also three, okay? So this is, uh, it's not integer. Okay, 
Then the area of the other triangle upper left. Okay, so the height one, two, from three to one is two. Okay, the other side horizontal length from negative two to one is a three. All right, so that's it. So you do 18 minus three minus nine over two minus three. Okay, so you're going to 18 minus six and 12. 24 minus 9, I think uh, that is going to be uh, yeah, 15. Right? Okay, so it's a fraction, it's nice. Right, so that's the area. So we call the user sub, it's called the subtraction method. Now there, are, there. Are, I said that we are like, uh, in a couple of like lessons later. We are going to study area triangles. So we are going to learn the formula. Okay. Right. Our next problem is the following. So we are told that this is square. The four. Uh, vertices of a square the square a b c d have a coordinate have a coordinates I'm going to give it coordinates four and a two one and a fourteen thirteen and a nine and eight and a three find the area of the square So we have to draw the picture first. So here's the first point, eight and negative three. Second point, 13 and nine. And then then uh, one and the 14. And here, negative four and the two. So this is a square. And from here, all you need to do is I don't need to verify to square unless they make mistakes when they when they make the problem. So clearly, you can from you can use any pair of the numbers to find the the, the length of the side. Okay, so A is going to be right the distance between P and the Q. Okay, so we use the distance formula. The difference of their the x coordinate and square, the difference is the y coordinate. So you work out uh, 13 minus 8 is 5, and that's the 12 square. So this is 13. So the edge length of the, so the area is going to be 8 square, right? So So this is the application of the distance formula. Okay. Now my question is, uh, what is the coordinate? Where's the center of the square? Okay. Where's Find the center of the square. Find the coordinate. Find the the center. So let's go back to the picture. Where's the center? Center is somewhere here. This is center. Can you find it? Let me know, please. 
You have to give me the coordinate. Right. You see that the center will be on the on the diagonal of the strip. It must be the middle point of the of the of between the two end points, right? So if this is the x bar and the y bar, the x bar is going to be have the, the, the mean value of the x coordinate, right? So that is going to be uh, if you use this to pair the point, okay, horizontal pair, right? So that is going to be nine over two. Y bar is going to be okay, 57. Now you can use the other two pair of the numbers. You still get the same answer, right? Okay? And you will get the same answer. So I'm not going to be clear. So this is the center. Okay, this is the center. Right. So now I'm going to talk about uh, the lines. Okay. Lines and the linear equation. I know there's a different uh, co uh, the correspondence, a point and the coordinate, right? But you have a bunch of points. Okay. Can you can you describe by linear? Actually, can be described by linear equation. Something like that, A, B, C. Okay, question is this form. Okay, let me show you why. Okay, a point in the extra plane uh, corresponds to the chord, a pair of numbers. A strict line in the extra plane corresponds to a linear question. So that means that coordinates are related by this equation. So how do we get this kind of equation? Okay, first of all, okay, let's check the line, right? Here's the axis, this line. Okay, this is a point. Uh, this is point P. That's point, yeah, P1, P2. So you get a triangle, right? But I find out if this is delta y, this is delta x. The delta y is y2 minus y1, delta x is x2 minus x1. I find out this ratio, delta y minus delta x, delta x, is a constant. Okay, independent, independent of the locations of p1, p2 on the line. The line. Okay. So this is kind of like a invariant. Why this is a, a constant? Uh, this can be proved using the similarity. Okay. If you have a triangle like that, then you have a tri another triangle there. Those two triangles, this is y, here's delta x. That's the delta y part, delta x part. Now, those two triangles are similar. Similar means the ratio of their corresponding sides are going to be equal, right? If two triangles are similar. So then you relate to this above uh, uh, equation, then you can get 
down to the y with down x down x coming down to y. Now, that's why the ratio of the vertical side over to the horizontal side is always a constant, okay? Regardless of the location of a p, you know, p1, p2, and the p1 power, two power, doesn't matter, okay? So this is called, is called the, uh, the slope, okay, of the plane, of the, of, of the line. Right, once you get a slope, okay, I'm going to, uh, and let's usually denote the by m. Okay, now once you know the slope, then you can find the relationship of all the on the line. How? This is a, a p1, right? X and y1. And I take an arbitrary point, a p2, a p, x and y. So <laughs> if p is a point on the line, then, then delta y over delta x, which is the y minus y, y one, x over x one, is going to be the slope, right? right? The ratio. This ratio is in constant, so we can, you know, it's equal to slope. It's denoted by m. Then, rewrite to this equation and written in form. Right, and let's put the delta y here, y minus the first, and x minus. So, so the coordinates of the point on the line must sit from this equation. This is an equation. Here, m is a slope, x, y, y, you know, is a point. <laughs> right. All right, so let's see. Let's do an exercise, okay? <laughs> If a line uh, has slope of m equals negative two and passes through another point p e and uh, two and one, find the equation for the line or for the coordinates of point on the line. Find the equation. Equation means the relationship, okay? Here. Yeah. For the line. We simply just say for the line. Actually, for all the points on the line. Okay, how do I do that? Well, just use up our formula, okay? So y minus y equals the slope in the y minus y1 equals m minus y1, right? So here's x minus 2. Okay, so y minus y equals two x plus four. Y equals negative x plus five, right? Move the negative ones over to the right hand side. Or you can simply write two x plus y minus y equals zero. Most of the form. Okay, right. So this particular line, the coordinates of this line are determined by this relationship. X and Y. Okay. Why add a five? I move a I move a negative one to the right hand side. And so the so Y equals negative X plus four plus one. Four plus one is five. Got it? Okay, then I move all of everything to the left hand side. Then two X on the left hand side and five back to me becomes negative. So this is the general form of the equation. Okay. In X and Y. Right. So that is um, the condition, you know, you're given you are given uh, two points. Uh, you are given a point of slope. So here uh, is another problem. Find the uh, uh, find the equation 
for the line passes passes yeah that passes through two points negative one and the one and four and the three so please go ahead to do it if you if you remember them what that what the we're talking about so this you have to find an equation for all the coordinates for the coordinates all the point on the line and this line passes through the two points p and that's right p1 p2 you actually don't need to draw the picture just find the equation okay I see some of you get answer already. Okay, let's let's take a look at. All right, first of all, you have to find the slope. The slope is going to be delta y over delta x, which is changing x and the changing y. Delta y, okay, the difference of the y coordinate doesn't matter what you want to call it, you know, y two minus y one, right? So the second point, three, the first point here is one. The second point, four, six. So I get two and a six, one third. So one third is a slope, all right? Then you write on the equation, which if you have a slope and the point, so y minus y, y equals m times, right? Okay, so y minus, one equals the third x minus negative two. Okay, so this is an equation, but you can express it in many different ways. Okay, let's do it. Y minus one equals one third x, and here's a plus two, but two over three. Okay, and then I move one to the right hand side. Then I get, I think, a two plus. Two thirds plus one, okay? Uh, two thirds plus one is a five or three. Okay, so this is called the uh, uh, slope uh, uh, intersection form, okay? So what is slope? Slope, this is a slope. And this is actually the y intercept. Why is y intercept? Because when x equals zero, y is going to be three. So zero over three. Uh, five over three. This is the point on the x a y axis. That's called the y intercept. Okay. <clears throat> Another form is you multiply both sides by three. So three y equals x plus five, or x minus three y plus five equals zero. This is the general form. Right. There are many different forms. That's why I say I find the n equation. I did not say find the z equation. And they're because there are several forms of the equation. So this is the most general form. Okay. So there are, there are three different types of much, okay? The general form, the form of in the equation, Okay, one is 
slope point to four. Okay. The slope of one point is y minus one equals m x minus x one. So if we know the slope, and uh, then if we know it passes through a point, okay, then you get the equation in this form. The second way is slope into sector form. Okay, this is a form in the form. Uh, it's the visa y intercept. Okay, the reason is when x equals zero, y is a b, right? So the picture here, it's actually is a slightly more general than a slightly more special than the slope of point form. So the point here is actually is going to be zero and the b and the slope. Okay. The final is that the most general form and x plus b y plus b. Okay. But from the general form, you can always get slope because this general form b y equals negative x minus c, y equals negative a over b x minus c over b. So you get a slope in the sector form, right? That is a slope in the negative B of A is a slope. All right, so now let's take a look at two uh, two line of parallel. If you look at two lines of parallel, yeah, so let's say two parallel lines. Okay, this is a B1, that's B2. I think M1, M2, right? So two lines are parallel. If and only if they have the same slope. That's it. And how about two lines are uh, uh, perpendicular? Okay, the perpendicular, if only for the product of their, their uh, the product of those two slopes is going to be negative one. Okay. Perpendicular, if and only if m1 times m3 is negative one. Now, let me explain to you why. The product is going to be negative. Okay, here's the reason. Okay, let's just focus on the, all the points that, yeah. So this is perpendicular, right? And that is a, that's called the A and the B, right? So A, B in this particular picture both are positive. So the slope is going to be B of A. Now, if those two lines are perpendicular, you choose the same point, you rotate to 90 degrees, right? So you get it here. The coordinates of that point, I think that's going to be negative B and A. And why is negative B? Think about uh, this lens, okay? The height is B, right? It's, it's over here. It become horizontal, the vertical becomes horizontal. That's and is a negative because this is a point in the second quadrant. So that's a negative. And uh, and this if this is a yeah, what is the slope of that? Okay, so if this is the M1, so M2 is gonna be the y coordinate of the of the x coordinate. 
And then you will see that the product is going to be negative. That is the reason I'm trying to explain to you why that when the perpendicular slope must be, you know, the product slope and a negative are uh, reciprocal to each other. All right, so let's look at the following problem. Uh, find any equation, so that means in any form, for the line, okay, which is parallel to 2x plus 3 equals 1 and pass, passing uh, through another point. Okay, so what do we give it? So we are given the information here, P negative 3 and 1 is here. And uh, And the PN and negative three is here. Negative. Okay. So the line is parallel to the given line. So let's take a look at 2x plus 3y equals 1. So 3y equals 1 mi uh, minus 2x. Y equals negative 12. 3x. Plus one third. Okay, right? so that means this line passing through this point has a negative slope. Okay, right? here's one third. So the slope is going to be negative two over three. Okay. So another line parallel to that means you are given a slope for the another line. But that's just passing through another point. Okay, so the slope for that particular line is still negative two. So the equation would be y point the slope form. It's y minus one negative three x minus x. Okay, that's the equation. You don't even to simplify. It's called the point slope form. So you are given the slope. Because it's just two lines of parallel, and then you are given a point, the line passes through, then you get a slope of point form, and get an equation. Okay, so let's look at the next problem. Okay, this is a point. Okay, we know that three points are one negative four, p negative one, and p plus one three are on the same line. Okay, first find the value of p. Second. If Q1 is on the line, it is the value of Q. Okay. So it's hard to draw because I have three points, but those two points, they're not as you know, the second and third points, there's a variable P there. Right. So it's hard to draw. I'm not going to draw a picture. So first of all, I have to find the value of P. But you have three points. So those three points, they should have the same, uh, uh, any pair of the numbers that get the slope, the slope, okay? Uh, and I'm going to use this one, P, Q, and R, okay? The slope between uh, the points between P and the Q is gonna be the difference of the coordinates. And the p minus one, so it's going to be three. One. So the slope depends on the value of p. Then m, p, and r are gap 
uh, 3 minus negative 4, p plus 1 minus 1. So I get a p, 7 over p. Still not good. m and the qr. m and the qr. That's good. So qr. So it'll be 3 minus, uh, minus negative 1. And the p plus 1 minus p. So I'm surprised we have specific value. All right. So we calculate the slope of the line passing through P and Q, P and R, and the QR. But they are the same line, right? They all should be equal. So MPQ should be equal to MPR, should be equal to MQR. Okay, so they're all equal, right? Because the same line. And uh, let's see, we hope we don't get a contradiction. So 7 over p equals 4, that implies p equals 7 4. But how about the other one? Uh, 3 over p minus 1 equals 4. So that implies p equals 3 over 4. That implies p equals 3 over plus 1, which is 7 over Exactly the same value, so it doesn't matter which tag you use. Okay, so you we determine the value now. How about the Q? We say if Q1 is on the line, if Q1 is on the line, you can use any of the points. Now, this is a PQ R, that's called the S. Okay, so this is another point on the line. Right, and that's a point on the line. So you just need to find the slope and the P and the X. So what is the P? P has coordinates to one and negative four, right? So that's gonna be negative four minus one. And the negative four minus one, one minus Q, which is gonna be, what is the slope? Slope is, a, I think the slope is four. four. Right? Because it's on the same line. So the slope is determined by this P and the S should be the same, right? So that's going to be negative 5 over minus Q equals 4. And then let's solve it. Okay. Uh, 1 minus Q equals negative 5 over 4. And the Q is going to be, I think, 9 over. Yeah, that's call it answer. So we stop here. I apologize. I totally forgot to my setting. Well, okay. So that's why we delayed the 10 minutes.